Revelation chapter 19, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he had judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. The four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We praise you for your goodness, your excellent greatness. We thank you, Lord, for your tender mercy, your loving kindness, and thank you for the privilege of being able to come to church this morning. Lord, I realize it's raining outside, and Lord, if we didn't need the rain, you wouldn't have gave it. Lord, but I do also realize that that affects with people's psyche and spirits. Uh, God, there may be some that came in this morning having to travel in the rain, and they got a low spirit. There may be some that came in this morning got an odd spirit. God, we pray for the Holy Spirit now to take control over this service. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd put a hedge about us. We plead for the blood of the Lamb to be placed over this place. That you'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, and God, that you'd hedge us in and be, allow us to be able to worship you uh, in spirit and in truth. Uh, God, I pray for Holy Ghost conviction. God, I pray for conviction uh, of sinners, that God, they'd realize their lost condition, uh, they'd realize that uh, uh, they're the enemies of God, uh, and they'd realize that they're going to die and go to hell without uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for Holy Ghost conviction for uh, the saints of God. Uh, Lord, I pray they'd realize uh, their slackness, uh, they'd realize... Uh, where they've come short, uh, they realize uh, in the scope of eternity they're not doing anything that matters. Uh, God, I pray today uh, under that conviction they'd repent, uh, be revived, uh, and God, they'd go forth from this place different than when they came in. Uh, Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart. Uh, I pray uh, that, Lord, you'd send a wind through here uh, like we've not seen in some days. Uh, and I pray that Jesus would be magnified uh, and glorified uh, and exalted. Uh, and I pray that all attention, uh, all praise, uh, all honor, uh, all glory would go unto him. Uh, Father, I pray uh, you'd sit down amongst us uh, in spite of us. Uh, and God, I pray uh, that, Lord, you'd stir our hearts for righteousness' sake. Uh, God, you'd give us a desire for holiness. Uh, and God, you'd do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, use this unworthy vessel, Father. Uh, get glory to your glorious name. Uh, we'll bless you and praise you for it. Uh, for it's in that holy name, uh, that wonderful name, uh, that name that's above every name, uh, the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Uh, in these verses, uh, we find four times uh, the mention of alleluia. Uh, uh, oh, if you're a hillbilly, uh, uh, if you're a redneck, uh, if you're a southern person, uh, we put a howl on that. Uh, it's hallelujah. What a blessing. Uh, uh, we find four times uh, uh, the mention of alleluia. Uh, can I say uh, uh, that in these alleluias we find uh, uh, the first one uh, is for uh, redemption's sake. Uh, look again, if you will, in verse number one, uh, the Bible says in after these things, uh, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, 
salvation uh, and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Uh, hey, uh, uh, they're shouting hallelujah because they've been redeemed. Uh, they're in heaven. Uh, they don't deserve to go to heaven. Uh, they didn't do anything to merit themselves in heaven. Uh, but hey, uh, they're there because they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Uh, and the first thing they say, uh, hallelujah, salvation uh, unto the Lord our God. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, the saved's going home one of these days. Uh, hey, uh, one of these days if you're born again, uh, if your name's written in the Lamb's book of life, uh, you mark her down, verse number one, you're going to be there. Uh, and you're going to be shouting hallelujah uh, unto the Lord. Uh, hey, you might not be shouting now, uh, but if you're saved, you're going to be. Uh, I highly recommend getting practiced up uh, so you don't look like an oddball. Uh, hey, uh, you say, I don't want to look like Phil. He looks like an oddball. Not in heaven, he don't. Uh, uh, you'll look like the oddball. Uh, hey, we ought to say, hallelujah, I'm saved and redeemed. Uh, we find the first hallelujah is because of redemption. The second hallelujah is because of restitution. Look what it says. Verse number one says, And after these things, what things? Look at verse number two. For true and righteous are his judgments, uh, for he had judged the great whore uh, which did corrupt the earth with their fornication uh, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Uh, and again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Uh, uh, after these things, what things? Uh, he judged the great whore uh, that did corrupt the earth with her fornication. Uh, and the Bible says that her smoke rises up forever and ever. Uh, why? Because she's a crispy critter. Uh, uh, she's burning in the lake of fire. Uh, uh, she's in hell. Uh, she can no longer corrupt with her fornication. Uh, hey, uh, she can no longer martyr the saints of God. Uh, uh, he has judged her uh, and found her guilty. Uh, and the crowd in heaven says, uh, Hallelujah, praise be unto God. Uh, uh, you say, uh, who is the great whore? A lot of people have given a lot of thought to that. A lot of commentary on that. Uh, can I say, uh, the whore, uh, the one that has uh, 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 corrupted the earth with her fornication, the one that has spread a false gospel, a false religion, uh, the one that has damned many to hell, uh, the one that has fought against the church more than any other uh, uh, religion, the one that has killed more Christians uh, than any other religion, the one that God is going to judge harshly uh, as a head that is not the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm has an agenda that was not started by Jesus Christ. Has a gospel that does not promote Jesus Christ. Has a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. You say, what is that religion? It's known today as the Catholic Church. That's what we are shouting hallelujah over. Mm. You say, preacher, that is very harsh. You realize during the Dark Ages, it is estimated somewhere around 10 million Christians were slaughtered for their faith because they would not accept infant baptism and not accept a state-sponsored church. Uh, preacher, who slaughtered them? The Catholic Church. Hmm. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Read how many families were burned at the stake because they would not, would not denounce Jesus Christ and would not accept infant baptism. Mm. Read how many folks were beheaded, how many folks were martyred. Mm. Read uh, 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 Carol's book on the trail of the blood and how many Christians were slaughtered during the Dark Ages for their faith. They were slaughtered by the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church's motto then was, you will either submit to us or we will kill you. We will take the world by force. Yet Jesus Christ came in love. Mm. we find there will be hallelujah for restitution and the blood of the martyrs my dear friends will be avenged the third hallelujah is in reverence look in verse number 4 by the way 
I didn't say Catholics, I said Catholic Church. There's a lot of good Catholic people who just need to be born again. Are you listening? Don't throw off on somebody because they're Catholic. That's probably how they were raised. Catholic Church used to boast that if you give them, their, them your children till they're five years old, they won't lose them. And they don't lose many. They've been indoctrinated in falseness. But not only them. A lot of Pentecostals have been indoctrinated in falseness. A lot of Methodists have been indoctrinated in falseness. A lot of Presbyterians have been indoctrinated in falseness. Uh, a lot of Episcopalians have been indoctrinated in falseness. Uh, a lot of Lutherans have been indoctrinated in falseness. Uh, a lot of Southern Baptists have been indoctrinated in falseness. Uh, and even a lot of Independent Baptists have been indoctrinated in falseness. Uh, we need to be indoctrinated in the Scriptures. Because the truth will set you free. We see the redemption is why they're saying hallelujah. The restitution, but also reverence. Look at verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying amen, hallelujah. Hmm? Hallelujah. Worship it. Wish some of you all do a little worshiping today. When you get to worshiping Jesus and quit worrying about who's sitting around you, uh, quit worrying about what the weather is, uh, quit worrying about what's going to go on this afternoon, uh, and get your focus on Jesus, uh, you might put a little hand up and say, Hallelujah, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Uh, you might say, Hallelujah, I'm faring a lot better than I've sown. Uh, uh, you might throw up a little hand and say, Hallelujah, God's been good to me. Uh, hey, blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, and the fourth hallelujah is because he reigneth. Mm, I love verse number six. <laughs> and the Bible says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and as a voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Uh, you may be come in lower than Job's turkey. Uh, you may not have two cents to rub together. Uh, uh, you may have voted for Joe Biden and you're feeling real bad about it. Uh, uh, you may have come in with a load of problems. Uh, and friend, you might not have much to shout about. Uh, but if you can just wrap your mind around the fact uh, that Jesus is on the throne. Uh, hey, he's not in the grave. He's on the throne. Uh, he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Uh, he is is still way well able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think. Uh, you might too just stop a hand uh, and say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, but I'm not going to preach on any of that. I'm really interested in verse number 5. Verse number 5 says, And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. I'm going to preach with the help of the Lord on this little thought. I want to preach on the motivation for the hallelujahs. You can say hallelujah and not mean it. But if you mean it, you'll say it. If there's something stirring in your heart, they can't keep you shut and your mouth shut. Hmm. What is the motivation for these hallelujahs? Well, I want you to notice, first of all, the definitive. Look at verse number 5 again. It said, And a voice came out of the throne. It is a definite article written in the Word of God that a voice came out of the throne. Can I say, if you hear His voice, You'll, you'll say hallelujah. He said, my sheep know my voice. Huh? Are you listening? A lot of people claim to be sheep, but they've never heard God. Can I help you? You might just be a wolf in sheep's clothing. You might be a goat. Mm, sheep follow. Goats but, but He said, my sheep might hear my voice, and they follow me. The definitive is the choice motive for saying hallelujah is you know his voice. Have you ever heard his voice? Listen. He says, seeking ye shall find. If you're seeking him, 
You'll hear his voice in the scriptures. You'll hear his voice driving down the road in song. You'll hear his voice inside your heart. There are some things I can't explain, but I know because I've heard it in my heart. You'll hear his voice in the cry of a child. See, if you're looking for him, you can't help but hear his voice. What I worry about, Brother Ron, is there's a lot of folks sitting at church pew all the time. They've never heard God. Let me help you something. It's not an audible voice now, but it will be. But you can't hear his voice. See, Jesus said he must needs go away so the comforter could come. See, those that know the Lord have the comforter inside of them, the Holy Ghost. And he leads us and guides us into all truth. How does he do that? Through the voice of God. Preacher, I've never heard it. I'd do some checking up. Now listen, Miss Lisa, you can be saved. And you can get your head so full of the world and full of junk and full of being busy, you don't have time to hear the voice of God. But if you know him, you know his voice. Can I say this? I've sat in church services where a preacher be preaching. I know those who know the Lord and those who don't. Because those that know the Lord, those that are following the Lord, I hear the Lord's voice and they're preaching. Hmm. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I've heard, I, I've heard some preaching went away thinking, well, I don't know about that fella. But I've heard some preaching, and you know that fella's walk with God. Mm-mm. Can I say, we see the definitive. I want you to notice the demand. Look what it says in verse number 5. And a voice came out of the throne, the definitive, saying, take a nap. Saying, lay out of church if you got something better to do. No. He demands something of us. It's not an option. He demands this, praise our God. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Hmm? Can I say, if you know the Lord, it ought to be a natural thing for you to praise Him. I worry about folks that say they're saved and you've never ever heard them praise the Lord. You've never ever heard them say anything kind about the Lord. You've never ever heard them say, Boy, I just thank God I'm saved. He says, the voice that comes out of the throne, Praise our God. That's a demand. And I say it's also natural. Hmm? You don't have to have a child tell you that they love their mom and daddy. You should never have to have a child of God tell you they love God. That would be quick to tell you that. That would be quick to tell you where God found them, what they were till they met the master. Hmm? I was a pauper till I met the king. Hmm? Ah, now I dine at his table. Hmm? I'm going to his house someday. Huh? We see the definitive, the voice. We see the demand to praise our God. Some of you didn't like that. You bogged down on that. I think you're telling on yourself. It's not hard to praise the Lord. Hmm? The ways of a transgressor is hard. Hmm? You're still bogged down. Boy, some of you are really upset this morning. I, I, got, a, I got an easy way, an easy fix for you to get straightened out. Get in the altar, get right with God. If you're lost, get born again. If you're saved and you've you got a problem praising God, you've got a problem, you need to get in here and get right with God. Hmm? Notice, if you will, the designation. Look again at verse number 5. It said, And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Who's to praise God? All his servants. All. Not just the ones that feel like it. Not just Brother Phil. Hmm? Starting Wednesday night, Brother Phil starts looking forward to Sunday. How about you? Boy, it got quiet again. Huh? Who's to praise the Lord? 
all his servants. How come when I ask for testimony, some of you sit there and twiddle your thumbs? If God saved you, you got something to praise him about. Hey, if he didn't save you, you'd still have something to praise him about. Because hmm? he'd still let you live. Do hmm? you know every person in hell worships God? Because they know he is the king of kings, and he's just in allowing them to go there because they rejected him. Hmm? He gave them opportunity, and they rejected him. Today, he's given you opportunity. All ye his servants, ye that fear him. There's why a lot of people don't, don't praise him, Brother Clint. They don't fear him. Hmm? Huh? Listen, a child that don't respect his daddy won't fear his daddy, won't be a, a blessing to his daddy, but be a heartache to his daddy. You know what's wrong with a, a lot of these teenagers? They don't respect their daddy. You know why they don't respect their daddy? They don't fear him. You know why they don't fear him? Because he never set them straight. Sometimes set them straight by scolding them. Sometimes bend them over their knee and wearing them out. Hmm? That's what will set them straight. You leave a child to himself to determine what he's going to turn out to be. Let me help you with what he'll turn out to be. A heathen. Hmm? The Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. You know what that means? That means heartache for you, mom and dad. You say, that's my little darling. I just can't bring myself to correct them. Well, don't come complaining to me when they're teenagers and you can't do anything with them. Hmm? You don't have to beat your children. I highly recommend it on occasion. But you don't have to beat them. Uh, just depends on the child. But you do have to break their will. Sometimes just a, st a tough scolding will break their will. I found every now and then you've got to beat the devil out of them. Hmm? Now listen. I don't know about anybody else. I didn't raise my children to hate church. Raised my children to love the Lord. But I did raise my children to respect me. There's a reason all three of my children are here this morning. They love God and they respect their father. Hmm? I've had preachers comment that my children respect me when their own children didn't respect them. Hmm? Hey, listen. If folks don't fear God because they don't respect him, therefore they won't praise him. Hmm? It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of an angry God, friend. You better fear him. Hmm? Your very breath is in his hand. Hmm? Your ability to get out of bed today came from him. Uh, everything you have, he's blessed you to have. In spite of you. Hmm? You ought to respect him. You ought to fear him. And if you fear him, you'll praise him. But it also said both small and great. Some of you think, well, I've not been saved long enough to praise the Lord or I don't know as much as somebody or I'm not or I'm not it says small or great don't matter who you are if you know him you ought to praise him hmm? that's the designation everybody regardless of where you are spiritually ought to praise the Lord hmm? but notice the disclosure I'm interested in this look again in verse number 5 and a voice came out of the throne saying praise our God all ye his servants and ye that fear him both small and great now, I'm interested in the disclosure Jordan could tell you what that means being a former law clerk I'm interested in this whose voice is it I'm interested in whose voice is demanding us to praise our God. The one that gives, my dear friends, the designation that all his servants, both small and great, those that fear God, should praise our God. Whose voice is it? Well, if you read commentators, you can get all kinds of answers and opinions on who they think it is. So many of them think that it means those around the throne. Well, I think God knows the difference between those around 
the throne and those out of the throne. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, who, 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 who is it? Well, look at what the Bible says uh, uh, up here in verse 4. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the what? And in verse 5 it says, out of the what? So who is it? Whose voice is it? Well, can I say, uh, if it's the Father's voice. What he is saying when he says, uh, praise our God, his motivation is Christ. The Father is saying, praise our God, Christ, uh, the Son, the one who bled and died so you could be here. So if it's the Father's voice coming out of the throne, uh, He is saying, praise the Son. Because He made it possible for you to even offer up praise unto God. For you to know who God is. Uh, for you to be in God's presence. Uh, so give the praise to Him. But if it's the Son, Jesus' voice, and he says, praise our God. His motivation is the Father. Because it was the Father's plan that caused him to be the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. It was the Father's plan to accept those who would come to him by Christ. It was the Father's plan to allow the blood of Christ to cleanse sinners from their sin and adopt them into the family of God. So the Son says, because of the Father's great plan, praise our God, because without Him, you would not be here today. Whose voice is it? Could be the Father's. Could be the Son's. But it could be the silent partner of the Godhead. The Spirit. Now listen. He's the silent partner. Jesus said that when He would come, He would testify of me. Can I say the Holy Ghost never brings attention to Himself. Anybody that's all the time... Uh, boasting about worshiping the Holy Ghost they're out of the will of God because the Holy Ghost don't want any attention he don't want any praise uh, he don't want anything to come to him uh, he points everybody to Christ uh, uh, listen he's a silent partner of the Godhead but maybe right here he's going to speak up uh, maybe he's held his peace long enough uh, maybe this is his voice uh, and we'll hear his voice in glory uh, and his voice his motivation is uh, praise uh, our plural God uh, he's saying praise the father and praise the son uh, praise the father uh, for having the plan uh, but praise the son for humbling himself uh, and taking on the form of a servant uh, and becoming obedient unto death uh, even the death of the cross uh, he's saying praise them both uh, cause they're worthy of our praise we see the disclosure Whose voice was it? The Godhead's. Why does it say praise our God? Because He's one God with three distinctions. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He's one God in three persons. And praise our God means give them the glory due their name. Then I want you to notice the delighted. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, And I heard as it were, the voice of a great multitude, the voice of many waters, mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And look at verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice. What do we got to rejoice and be glad of? Well, we're only in heaven. But he goes on to say, And give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. It was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, and the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, and he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Notice the rejoicing. The bride is having a spell. 
She's about ready to be arrayed in fine twine linen. The Bible says mm, she's made herself ready. What does that mean? That means we've been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And now we are able to put on the wedding garment. You see, he's coming after a bride without spot, without blemish. No wrinkles. Mm, he calls us out of here right now. There's a lot of wrinkles in this room. Some of you haven't prayed like you should this week. Some of you haven't uh, read the Word of God like you should this week. Some of you haven't been a light and a witness like you should be this week. Some of you haven't come ready to praise and worship God even here today. So he calls us out of here. You think you're ready to put on the wedding garment? No, we got to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Be judged for the deeds of this body after we got saved. Whether they be good or evil. Those things that we overcame, those things we were obedient in, those would be gold, silver, precious stones, but those things that were for naught, wood, hay, and stubble. And after we get judged, say, why, why are we going to get those rewards so we can lay them back at his feet? We'll get the wedding garment. There's rejoicing going on because the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah, we're going to a feast and not a fast. Uh -uh. Listen, when we were younger, Miss Annette and I'd go on vacation and we'd talk about the events and everything we saw. Now we go on vacation, it's all about the food we ate. We just went to Boston not long ago, had seafood. I highly recommend going to Boston eating seafood. Uh, we had a good, good trip. Uh, we base our vacations on the quality of the food we ate. We're going to heaven, and we're going to a marriage supper. Hallelujah. I don't know what we're going to eat, but it's going to be out of this world, I promise you. Huh? Uh, they're excited. They're rejoicing. Isn't it amazing that our text starts with God destroying the false church, and then he's embracing and elevating the true church? What a blessing. Huh? What a blessing. They're rejoicing. Can't help but rejoice. We're around Him. We're like Him. And we're getting ready to be married to Him. What a blessing that's going to be. Said all that, say this. All these things that they're saying hallelujah about have already come true in our lives. We're just not before His throne. Why aren't we saying hallelujah today? The preacher, I've had it tough, not as tough as you'd have it if you was on your way to hell. Uh, you had no hope. Now you have hope. And your hope's not in the Pope. And you're no longer on dope. And through the Holy Ghost you can cope. Too many of you, all you want to do is mope. Some of you look like you've been swinging from a rope. I could be a rapper, put that to music. Huh? No, we spend so much time focusing on things that don't matter that when we come to the house of God, we have no shout. You know, back in the Old Testament, when they laid the foundation in Ezra's day, they couldn't discern the noise between the weeping and the shouting. But the enemies feared them because there was a shout of a king in Israel. You know why Washington don't fear us? You know why Frankfurt don't fear us? You know why the neighbors don't respect us? There's no shout of a king amongst God's people. You're too busy moping and coping instead of giving praise unto God because he didn't leave you where he found you. God help us to delight as if we was already there. Because your citizenship is, your conversation is, 
everything that you have that is worth anything is already over there. The only thing keeping you from there is this old rotten flesh. So why don't we get ready and rejoice like we're already there? Because, my dear friends, it's reality. Uh, there's a lot of places in the Bible where I write my name right next to it. Because it's for me. Huh? I'm a going. How come you're not saying hallelujah today? How come you're not rejoicing today? You can be if you get your perspective right. And I found a lot of times my perspective gets right when I'm on my knees confessing to him that I'm sorry for not doing what I should have been doing all along. If you're here today and you're saved and you're not rejoicing in your salvation, you ought to get in the altar and ask God to forgive you. Huh? Because he said, rejoice not that the uh, uh, these power you have these things you, you know subjects you have power over. He said, but rather rejoice in that your name's written in heaven. If you know you're saved, you have cause to rejoice. If you're not rejoicing, you ought to tell God you're sorry. If you're here today and you're not saved, well, what are you waiting on? You waiting on the trumpet? It's going to be too late then. You're going to die and go to hell. Hmm? Roads are bad out there. You might be in a car wreck on the way home. You might die and go to hell. I wouldn't put it off. I wouldn't risk it on anything else. I'd get my heart right with Jesus today. You know you're lost. And then you know you need to get saved. And my dear friends, the only one can save you is Jesus. He allowed you to be here, allowed you to hear this message, allowed you to see all this going on in heaven, and friend, you'll not be there. You'll be in the charred region of the dam. You'll be, uh, uh, my dear friend, uh, uh, begging for mercy. You'll be tormented in the flames of hell, uh, begging God for another chance, but it'll never come. You'll die and go to hell because you rejected Jesus Christ. So I'm waiting on a sign. Here's your sign. Jesus saves. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Friend, if you know you're lost, He wants to save you. But can I help you something? He'll not save you in spite of you. He'll bid you to come. Give you an invitation to come. But if you don't come, shame on you. You'll die and go to hell, friend. I wouldn't die and go to hell for anybody. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't put it off. I'd get right with Jesus Christ today. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today's the day of salvation. You have no hope of tomorrow. You have no hope that God will ever give you another opportunity to repent. But He's giving you right now. I'd get right with Jesus Christ. Some are already coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll get your guitar, get a song ready to pick out. You're not rejoicing today. You ought to come and tell the Lord you're sorry. If you're lost today, you ought to come. Get saved. Say, preacher, I don't know how to get saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can get saved today. There are folks coming. How about you? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, thank you for the reality that you've pinned down that is yet to happen but will happen soon. We'll be around your throne forever and ever and ever. God, I pray and I fear for those that are here today. Lord, they're, they're not saved. Some may be church members. Some may have been baptized. Some may have prayed a prayer. Lord, they believe that you was born. They believe that you died on the cross. They believe that you rose from the dead. But they haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They've never repented and trusted Christ. God, I pray they'd come. I pray for a Holy Ghost conviction to where they can't stay lost. They'd come, give their heart and life to Jesus. God, I pray for that one that's saved. But Lord, they're living far beneath the privileges of being saved. And God, they have nothing to rejoice over today because all their desires are earthly. God, I pray for them. I pray you do a work in their heart. I pray for Holy Ghost conviction. Help them to see that only what's done for heaven's cause is all that matters. And God, do a work in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help no one to grieve or quench the Holy Ghost. And God, get glory to your name. 
Save that one near his tail, Father, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.